Hi there, I'm Paolo Romagnoli, I'm Chief of Flight Test at Pipistrel. I joined 2000 in uh, 2013 and I graduated as an aerospace engineer and I am also a flight instructor. So we do fly mostly ultralight aeroplanes and LSAs. Uh, test flight is a very wide type of exercise, so we have um, flight testing for development, flight testing for certification and flight testing for production. Um, so this um, range of activities is very wide and it's very different each mission from the other. Um, development or research flight testing includes um, flight testing of new types or completely new technology, a new kind of power, powertrain and so on. Um, certification flight testing is more uh, showing compliance with a certain regulation and um, and then uh, okay in production flight testing is um, the activity performed before the delivery to the customer so after the production line so, before so the to the customer. you're flying all pipistrel models i'm flying most of pipistrel models not the general aviation ones due to my license so i'm limited to ultralight airplanes <coughs> and then they say so tell me a story i heard about spin testing for the Eurus 121 because that aircraft is approved for spinning um, you had to do a number of spins can you just explain what you did as part of that program so that uh, that's an interesting one so um, the virus shortwing 121 is the EASA CSLSA version of the virus shortwing we have several versions of the same model and that specific one is EASA approved for a spin for intentional spinning uh, to achieve this um, this uh, certificate, uh, we we had to do several several uh, spin <coughs> spin testing, and this includes the the basic spin testing, which is required anyway for the CSLSA certification, and this included something like 600 test points multiplied by three attempts each. And this is due to the many configuration you have to test spin uh, at, so like a different weight, different CG, flap setting, air brakes, power setting. And this makes the matrix very, very wide. And this is the this was the campaign for the basic certification. And then for the intentional spinning, uh, since during the initial campaign we saw that the behavior of the airplane was really, really promising. We decided to apply for intentional spins uh, certification and then this added another uh, 300 test points which have to be repeated instead of uh, one single turn as in the basic certification, a two turn spin and a three turn spin in many different configurations. So for part of certification you've intentionally done over 1000 uh, spinning events at all different ranges? All different ranges, configuration, weight, and so on. Not me personally, but some of them me personally with the pilot and some with the pilot alone, depending on the risk assessment and the mission type. So how many hours of spinning do you think you've done for the certification? Huh, hard to say a number, but uh, the total number is about 50 hours and myself, I don't know, about 10, 20 something. 20 hours of spinning and you can still walk <laughs> a straight line. <laughs> I think I can, <laughs> but I'm sitting now. So. Yeah, I've seen some great photographs and videos of the spinning, and it, it's something that's um, very valuable to, to watch and, uh, and learn just how good the aircraft, how capable they are at spinning. Other flight testing you do is with the electric program as well. Yes, we do, indeed. Um, my first flight in an electric aircraft has been in 2014. At the time, the project was called WhatsApp, and after that uh, we continued flying our two main electric projects which are the Taurus Electro and the Alpha Electro, which became the, the serial product, Alpha Electro, which you see flying around the world in more than 35 machines. And that was indeed a pretty unique occasion to fly electric airplanes. Uh, at the moment there are several projects around the world, but at that time there were not so many pilots flying electric airplanes. And as we used to say uh, back in 2013, there were most probably more people into space than people flying electric airplanes. So that was quite a, a pleasure and, yeah, and a unique occasion that you only had with the pistol. Now you're the head of the, uh, the test flight team. 
but you also have another a number of people that work uh, with you um, that do the production flight testing. Um, tell me a little bit about your team and what sort of experience they have at testing aircraft before they're released to the uh, public. Yeah, that's right. So, as you can imagine, as any product comes out from a factory, it has to be tested before delivery. So, that activity is a bit, I would say, more repeat, re repeating itself and uh, it's more scheduled and more defined in in every single minute of flight basically so every single model has a different uh, test campaign and a different uh, test procedure which is repeated every time uh, an aircraft of that model comes to the end of the production line uh, you have to know we have about seven actual pro projects in the, in the product list and the um, and together with all the possible uh, options we come up to about 40 different airplanes flying so in that case uh, you can imagine every single customer uh, having his own configuration so in the end also production test flying is not so boring because um, it's very rare that we, we see an airplane the same as the other one um, so you've had a bad you've got three test pilots now um, as well as yourself Correct. Uh, unfortunately, I'm, I'm now trading more office hours <laughs> towards less flying hours um, because of the, let's say, activities moved to in that direction for, for myself, but the flight test department is growing. At the time I came, uh, it was basically only me and one test pilot. At the moment, we have in total uh, two test pilots for production and subcontractors for uh, specific development flight testing and uh, together uh, five flight test engineers. So the flight test activity is pretty intense uh, due to the number of projects we are, we are ongoing. So when a new aircraft leaves production, um, the flight test pilot will go and he'll check over the aircraft like a, a very thorough pre-flight inspection. He'll go and do some short flights, identify any adjustments they get made, and then the flight testing progresses and there's about five hours on average on most aircraft, is that correct? That's on average, yes, depending on the market, there are minimum requirements for flight hours before delivery, but that's the average, yes, flight hour, five flight hours, and the pilot comes back with a report for the mechanics, and then they do the adjustments, you know, the, the airplane, as, as soon as the first flight, it doesn't fly always straight, it doesn't have the proper carburetor settings, and there are uh, um, several things that has to be adjusted so that the airplane, let's say, flies straight and as, as planned. And this feedback from pilots is really valuable for production. And the, the, the main goal in the end, as you know, is to deliver a, um, a proper product with, uh, in, in a proper shape to the customer. Do, uh, do the factory ever get it right first time you come back and say this aircraft doesn't need anything done to it? Or is that, uh, that just doesn't happen? That's our wet dream, if you can say. Yeah. <laughs> it never happened. So normally they, they'd have to make adjustments four, five, six times through no, the test flight say program? normal adjustment is one or two times. It's fine adjustment. Don't, don't imagine the airplane flipping over at the first flight. It's a fine adjustment, but they, they have to be done. I mean, even for your car, don't imagine that the, your car comes out of the factory and it drives straight or it has no problem with any system. So. That's the, that's the purpose, yeah. As part of your uh, experience and history with uh, test flying aircraft, have you ever had any close calls or big surprises uh, where you've been caught out? Yes, for example, um, yeah, well, the, the most surprises you have in development flight testing, of course. In production flight testing, you don't see uh, that much you know, mis, um, misalignments or whatever. Uh, in development flight test, especially now that we're developing uh, new technology in terms of uh, power train, power train uh, it's, um, it's always a challenge. So as soon as you explore new horizons in terms of uh, systems, power plant, in human machine interface, uh, avionics, um, it's very probable that uh, the flight doesn't go as planned. And so mission abort is quite a uh, common thing, um, doesn't mean that flight testing is done in a risky way, so we have a bunch of uh, hazard assessment work before uh, we go flying, so what I can say 
for one hour of flight, which is the fun part. You always have two, three days of preparation in advance and two, three days of data analysis and reporting later. So the, f the flight part is the fun part, uh, but still the, the little part of the work of the, of the flight test engineer in general. Um, you've had a lot of experience now with both gasoline-powered engines and also electric. Speaking personally, and, and not for the company, but you personally, what do you think of electric flight and what sort of future do you think it will bring to the world of aviation? My personal view is that the, um, the aircrafts, air, air, the existing aircrafts designed as, as we are used to, the, and then simply transform as an, uh, in the power plant um, into electric aircraft uh, are not that efficient and they are not um, showing the best of the potential of the electric uh, electrification of the of aviation. Um, this is of course the starting point because the, you have to start from something really known like our airplanes which we know very well and then modify a little part which is the power plant and test it and develop it until it's mature but this is just the beginning um, what I see is that electrification will bring to a completely new design principle for aircrafts will drive the design in certain directions like um, for example having so many engines instead of only one for example in general aviation uh, being able to mm, direct the, the thrust in any direction at any time to control the aircraft in a, such a new way which is just the, um, shows you that the potential is, is really high and we are just at the beginning of the development of electric flight so we are in, at a good point I think we did a good job so far developing the power train but now it's time to change the design philosophy according to the electric power plant and to scale it up because of course the potential of scaling it up is uh, very high. We hear a lot now about the future of aviation. Electric has started, we're talking a lot about the uh, Uber, Uber plat platforms uh, which will be um, completely autonomous. Do you think uh, sometime in the future there won't be a need for a test flight pilot? I think so. That you will always need in the end uh, um, feedback from a pilot. If I mean, we're talking about general aviation, this is what we deal with. Uh, in that case, pilot is always uh, the, the... I mean, the fly, pilot usually fly for pleasure, and in that case, the feelings that the airplane is able to give to the pilot are uh, kind of central in the design and development. So, um, even if we go to a completely new design like a Beetle or whatever, um, we have to focus on pilot feeling and perception of life. So there will always be a pilot up the front, even during the development and uh, implementation stages before we start testing aircraft that are completely computer controlled? My personal view is that yes, this will be the case, at least in the near years, yes. So it will keep you in a job till you retire? <laughs> this is what I'm trying to do, yes, <laughs> to keep my job. <laughs> Uh, thank you for listening, I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you here in Pipistrel at a certain point and to have you for a flight with me with our marvelous airplanes. <laughs> <laughs>